gaze upon a map of global air traffic, and a curious anomaly emerges. A vast blue emptiness dominates the picture where the Pacific Ocean sprawls. Planes, it seems, prefer to skirt the edges of this immense body of water, their paths forming a delicate tracery around a void. Why do these airborne behemoths, capable of continent-spanning journeys, shy away from a direct flight across the world's largest ocean? The answer, like the ocean itself, runs deep. It's a confluence of history, technology, and the awesome power of nature itself. Technological limitations too played their part, dictating the range and capabilities of early aircraft. And then there's the Pacific itself, a cauldron of meteorological fury, where storms gather with breathtaking speed and intensity. While modern aircraft possess the capability to traverse its vastness, the economic realities of aviation, coupled with the ever-present whims of nature, dictate a more nuanced approach. Planes, it turns out, are not exempt from the laws of physics or the capricious nature of the elements. The story of why planes avoid the Pacific is therefore a tapestry woven from multiple threads. The Pacific's history is littered with the ghosts of aviation's past. Amelia Earhart, her Lockheed Electra vanishing without a trace in 1937, remains a haunting reminder of the ocean's unforgiving nature. Her disappearance, still shrouded in mystery, underscores the challenges early aviators faced in navigating this vast expanse. Limited navigational tools, unreliable engines, and the sheer distances involved made each flight a gamble. The pioneering flights of Pan American Airways in the 1930s, using seaplanes to hop between islands, further illustrate the difficulties. These clipper flights, while groundbreaking, were fraught with risk. Weather delays, mechanical issues, and the constant threat of ditching in the unforgiving ocean were ever-present concerns. These early tragedies and triumphs shaped the development of Trans-Pacific Aviation. The need for reliable aircraft, sophisticated navigation systems, and a deeper understanding of the Pacific's meteorological patterns became paramount. The sheer scale of the Pacific Ocean presents a formidable challenge for aviation. Spanning over 60 million square miles, it dwarfs all other oceans combined. To cross it directly from, say, Los Angeles to Tokyo, is to traverse nearly 5,500 miles of open water. This vast distance has profound implications for aircraft design, fuel capacity, and flight planning. Early aircraft, limited by range and engine reliability, simply couldn't make such journeys. The development of long-range aircraft like the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8 in the 1950s marked a turning point. These planes, with their increased range and reliability, made trans-Pacific travel a commercial reality. However, even with these advancements, the tyranny of distance remained a factor. The need for fuel efficiency dictates that airlines seek the shortest possible routes. The vastness of the Pacific also limits diversion options in case of emergencies. High above the Pacific, powerful air currents swirl and churn, shaping the journeys of aircraft that dare to traverse its expanse. These jet streams, ribbons of high-altitude wind, can either be an aviator's best friend or their worst enemy. Flowing eastward at speeds exceeding 200 miles per hour, they can shave hours off a flight, saving precious time and fuel. However, flying against these winds is akin to swimming upstream, a costly and time-consuming endeavor. Pilots, therefore, play a delicate game with these atmospheric currents, carefully plotting their courses to exploit their power. Flights from North America to Asia often ride the jet stream, their paths curving northward to harness its eastward flow. This explains why a flight from Los Angeles to Tokyo might pass over Alaska, seemingly a detour, but in reality, a shrewd use of nature's power. The reverse journey, however, presents a different challenge. Flying westward against the jet stream is impractical, forcing airlines to seek alternative routes. The Mercator projection, a staple in classrooms worldwide, while useful for navigation, distorts our perception of the globe. It exaggerates the size of land masses at high latitudes, making the Pacific appear even vaster than it already is. This distortion has profound implications for understanding why planes avoid seemingly direct routes across the ocean. Consider a flight from Los Angeles to Tokyo. On a Mercator projection, the shortest path appears to be a straight line across the Pacific. However, the Earth is a sphere, and the shortest distance between two points on a sphere is a segment of a great circle. This means that the most efficient route actually curves northward, closer to the Arctic Circle, before descending towards Japan. 
This phenomenon, known as the Great Circle Route, explains why flights between North America and Asia often pass over Alaska or the Bering Sea. While seemingly a detour, these northerly routes actually shorten the distance traveled, saving time and fuel. The Earth's shape also influences the availability of diversion airports. The allure of the Great Circle Route, with its promise of shorter distances and fuel savings, has led airlines to explore polar routes, particularly over the Arctic. These routes, once the domain of science fiction, have become increasingly viable as aircraft technology has advanced. However, flying over the Arctic presents its own unique set of challenges. The extreme cold at these latitudes can affect aircraft performance, requiring specialized fuels and de-icing procedures. Navigation, too, becomes more complex as the magnetic North Pole plays havoc with traditional compasses. Satellite navigation has mitigated this somewhat, but the remoteness of polar regions means that communication systems can be unreliable. Perhaps the most significant challenge posed by polar routes is the lack of suitable diversion airports in case of emergencies. While long-range aircraft dominate trans-Pacific travel, island hopping, a relic of aviation's early days, still plays a role in connecting certain parts of the Pacific. Island nations, scattered like emeralds across the vast blue expanse, rely on these air bridges for their connection to the outside world. However, this reliance comes at a cost. Island hopping routes are often characterized by short hops between small airports, many of which lack the infrastructure of their mainland counterparts. This necessitates the use of smaller aircraft, limiting passenger and cargo capacity. Weather too plays a significant role, as tropical storms and typhoons can disrupt schedules and ground flights for days. The economics of island hopping are also challenging. Low passenger volumes and high operating costs make it difficult for airlines to maintain profitability. Government subsidies and strategic partnerships are often required to keep these vital air links operational. The decision to avoid direct flights over the Pacific, while driven by a complex interplay of factors, has significant implications for global travel and commerce. Longer flight times translate into increased fuel consumption, which in turn, impacts ticket prices and the environment. The need to circumvent the Pacific's vastness adds a premium to trans-Pacific travel, a cost ultimately borne by consumers. The environmental impact of these longer routes is also significant. Aviation is a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, and the extra fuel burned to circumvent the Pacific adds to this burden. The reliance on specific routes also creates congestion at certain airports, particularly those serving as hubs for trans-Pacific travel. This congestion can lead to delays, increased operating costs, and frustration for passengers. The story of why planes avoid the Pacific is not a static one. Technological advancements, geopolitical shifts, and evolving environmental concerns are constantly reshaping the aviation landscape, challenging long-held assumptions and opening up new possibilities. The development of ultra-long-range aircraft, like the Airbus A350 and Boeing 777X, with their extended range and fuel efficiency, could potentially make direct trans-Pacific flights more economically viable. These aircraft, capable of flying over 9,000 nautical miles without refueling, could open up new routes and reduce travel times. The increasing urgency of climate change is also prompting the aviation industry to explore alternative fuels and technologies to reduce its carbon footprint. Sustainable aviation fuels derived from renewable sources could significantly reduce emissions from trans-Pacific flights. Electric and hybrid electric aircraft, while still in their infancy, hold the promise of even greater environmental benefits. Despite the challenges posed by the Pacific, it has not prevented the rise of a deeply interconnected world. The development of aviation, while shaped by the ocean's vastness, has also played a crucial role in shrinking the distance between continents, facilitating trade, tourism, and cultural exchange. The Pacific, once a formidable barrier, is now a conduit for countless journeys. The flow of goods and services across the Pacific is a testament to this interconnectedness. From electronics and automobiles to agricultural products and manufactured goods, the Pacific Ocean is a vital artery for global commerce. The air cargo industry, reliant on these trans-Pacific routes, plays a crucial role in supporting global supply chains and facilitating international trade. Beyond commerce, the Pacific skies are also filled with travelers. 
tourists eager to experience the cultural riches of Asia, business people forging new partnerships and families separated by distance all rely on these aerial connections. The Pacific, despite our best efforts to bridge its vastness, retains an aura of mystery. Its depths remain largely unexplored, its moods unpredictable, its power undeniable. While we have learned to navigate its surface and airspace, it still holds secrets that continue to captivate and challenge us. The allure of the Pacific lies not only in its sheer size and power but also in the sense of wonder it evokes. To gaze out of an aircraft window at its endless expanse is to be reminded of the immensity of the natural world and the fragility of our place within it. The story of why planes avoid the Pacific is, therefore, more than just a tale of aviation logistics. It's a reminder of the enduring power of nature, the ingenuity of humankind, and the delicate dance between the two.